Would you rather be a turtle or a coyote? Probably a turtle. Because coyotes eat like raw meats. You'd rather eat like plants. So let's move on to round seven. Round seven was a, a quicker game and a happier result, at least for me. And I played an opening which I can't remember the last time I played it. Um, I started with d4. And like any time I play d4, at least in like tournament play, I always follow up with bishop f4. But in this game, I played a queen's gambit. Queen's Gambit is, I mean, it's a line that I I sometimes play. Like if if I play the English and Black plays e6, I kind of have to go into a Queen's Gambit. Um, but I decided to play this move order. I was expecting Queen's Gambit declined. We actually got exactly what I was expecting, at least for the the first five or six moves. E6. Oh, I should note my my opponent is Peter Giannatos, Fide Master. Rated just under 2300. So, knight c3. He plays bishop e7. Bishop e7, I think, is a more topical move these days. The idea is to force white to make a decision, as I can't develop the bishop to g5. Like, sometimes after knight f6, the bishop will come to, to g5. But um, delays it for one move. So I play one of the main lines here. It takes takes in bishop f4. This is... Yeah, I mean, this has been played many times before. Uh, Magnus, Naka, Naka, Giri, etc. c6, e3, or wait, no, not e3. There's a, another game going on in our section, I think between Olivier and Keaton Kerwa where it went e3 and then bishop d6 and stuff happened. But I play queen c2 first. Idea of queen c2 is to stop bishop f5. And then, okay, very soon I want to play e3. So knight f6, e3. Um, I was actually expecting him to play bishop d6. He has had one game in this previously, and he played bishop d6. But, um, okay, he played knight f6, so this is kind of the first move slightly outside of my preparation but I've played this position as black um, so I I have a general understanding of what the plans are uh, I play e3 plays knight bd7 then I played my next move on a slight misjudgment because I was imagining black wants to play knight h5 and the first move that came to mind was h3 just to, to keep the bishop everything would be okay but i thought i had a trap here i played knight f3 with the impression that after knight h5 i would have knight takes d5 so i want to pose this as a question to the chat after knight h5 um is knight takes d5 a good move or a bad move Actually, better question. Knight takes d5 is a bad move, but why is it a bad move? The idea is after it takes bishop c7 to trap the queen. So this was my, uh, at least it was my original intention. Um, so after knight takes d5, what can black do to punish white? Does anyone have it? Do, have I stumped everyone? Queen a5 does nothing. Oh, extreme Dota. Yeah, extreme Dota, I think, knows what's up. Um, so, knight takes d5 is bad because black can just take. And after bishop c7, yeah, it looks like the queen's trapped. But there's bishop to b4 check. And I'm just down a piece here. I gave away a knight. The queen now has room to escape. So I was a little bit disappointed in myself. And like after I played knight f3, I realized that like he can play knight h5 and just get the bishop, get the bishop pair. 
so yeah, bishop b4 making Luft for the queen. Um, so he played knight h5, and then, I mean, I had a choice here between, it's considering actually bishop e5, castling, or bishop g3. Played the most natural move, bishop g3. And even though this came from a queen's gambit, I mean, there's some similarities with the London, and especially after he takes. And this is something we see a lot in the, in the London, with some, uh, some h-file pressure. So he plays knight f6. And I castle. I was still feeling pretty comfortable. And yeah, I mean, white setup is, is pretty harmonious. It's like all the minor pieces are, are reasonable. I do have the half of an h-file. And then I think somehow things got good really quickly. And then there was actually a weird moment here. He played bishop g4. And I think he said something. I think he offered a draw, but I wasn't entirely sure. And like the last uh, two days, w when I've been white in the second game of the day, my opponents have, have offered me early draws, uh, like within the first 10 moves. And I I've, I've, was accept accepting them because I wasn't happy with, uh, with openings. Um, but in this game, I, I felt like pretty comfortable. And if he did offer me a draw, I still would not have taken it. Um, and especially after bishop g4, I think... I have a feeling it's a slight inaccuracy. Because I don't think black ever wants to take. And at some point, I'll relieve the pin and I'll play knight e5 to hit the bishop. So I was thinking here, I mean the bishop does need to find a square. Oh, maybe it's not so easy. Thinking bishop e6, but then there's knight g5. So yeah, maybe black's position is already a bit tricky. Maybe start with queen a5. I was thinking black should just like somehow find a square for the bishop and castle. I mean, maybe bishop d7. Looks very slow. But I thought if black can castle, get the king to safety, it shouldn't be so bad. There is also castling kingside, which he actually played in the game. So let's go forward, bishop g4. Play bishop d3, h6, and then king b1. Ben Feingold rule, always play king b1. In this position, I think king b1 is slightly multi-purpose. If he ever plays queen a5, then my knight would not be fully tied down to a2. Sometimes I have maneuvers with this knight. Also, sometimes I want to play rook c1, and uh, put more pressure on the half open c file, and also get out of the pin. And that's actually what happened. So he castled kingside, and I play rook c1. So now it looks like I I castled illegally. <laughs> like I've seen beginners castle like this in like one move. It took a couple extra moves to get this uh, this configuration. So my king's very safe here. And because it's opposite side castling, um, it's just naturally a, a sharper position. And I thought I had more attacking resources and also just more defensive resources too. Like I, I felt like black's attack is a bit slow here. Um, Knight e5 is coming very, very soon. And once the bishops hit, I have ideas of like g4, g5 to try and open the h-file. Um, so I think the combination of h6 and castling just gave me a lot of a uh, lot of potential. And I think if if black like somehow found the time to castle on the queen side and play king b8, I think the the king is much safer there. But of course, when he castles king side, he he does want to like expand and destroy me. And he actually had a game a few rounds earlier, a uh, slightly similar situation, like opposite side castling, um, actually from a London opening, and he just completely demolished white. But of course, it, it always depends on the position. So he plays c5, and I play knight e5, hitting the bishop, ignoring stuff. I heard ideas of g5, says love hate chess. Did g5 occur in this game? 
G5 did not occur in this game. There was a th I had there was a point in this game where I was calculating lines with G5. I was actually imagining like <laughs> love hate chess being uh, being satisfied if I would get G5 in. Uh, bishop e6, f4, and just the play flows like very nicely. I have ideas of, um, I think my main idea is f5, kick the bishop again, then g4, g5, sack the pawn, and then play g4 again. Idea of queen h2 and queen h8 mate. And like a good number of these moves come with tempo. So he played knight g4, which... I think it's just a blunder, but not sure what else to do. Like, it's already very unpleasant for black. So let's see what happened in the game. Knight g4. Now this position, there's actually a very simple forcing sequence, which I think guarantees white to win a pawn. I simply take, take, and bishop f5. This bishop has to take. After queen takes f5, there's no way to defend d5. Um, so this is a, the drawback of playing c5. I think he played c5 with good intention, it's just um, it was weakening to d5. He takes, I take, d5 still hanging. Um, and then bishop to f6. And this was a point, like, I was, I was beginning to imagine, like, okay, what if I just go for g4, g5? It's, it's not easy to defend. But then I also like still wanting to win this pawn. So I began to calculate. And the uh, line that I calculated was, I think, pretty forcing. I just take on d5. I let him take on d4, and then I play rook d1. Now the bishop, like even though the bishop's in the center, it's so short on squares. Can't play bishop f6, because then I just take twice and I'll win h6. Otherwise, I mean, the bishop has to retreat to one of these squares. I think bishop b6 was the best move. Uh, but he played bishop c5. And after bishop c5, there is is a like very nice move for white, which wins on the spot. Um, so I'll actually leave this for the chat. White to move. I mean, white's position is already nice. Like the pieces are in, in prime position. Black is a bit underdeveloped with the major pieces. The bishop is a bit loose. King is a little bit under fire. So white to move, try and find the best move. If you're watching on YouTube in the future, feel free to pause the video and think. Yeah, okay, looks like almost everyone found it. George288 saying rook takes h2, taking the, the free air. No, rook h6. It's a nice aesthetic move. Uh, threatening mate. Uh, black has to take. But then knight f6. And like I'm mating, but I'm also winning the queen. So what happened the game? Here, here. King went back to g8. And then, yeah, there was no need to take the queen. Just queen g4. And, uh, and the game finished. So I had a feeling if we go back, the better try in this position was bishop b6. And I actually spent, like, when I took on d5, I was calculating, like, pretty long line. Maybe I'll use this opportunity to, to draw arrows. So I was calculating knight takes d5, bishop takes d4, rook d1, bishop b6, still rook takes h6, pawn takes h6, knight f6, king g7. Then after knight h5, he has king h8, so not getting maiden. And then I would take the queen. He would have to take back with bishop to defend f6, because otherwise queen f6 would just be mate. Um, and then I would have queen e5 check, provoking f6, and then queen d5. So this is my calculation from, from this position, where like material wise it's actually kind of balanced like it's two rooks for a queen and pawn but i mean black's pieces are are really bad b7's hanging and i would have ideas 
Okay, not of g4, g5, but ideas of f5 and bringing the knight to g6. So I, I wanted to be certain that like everything was working before I went for uh, for this. But okay, none of it happened because he played bishop c5. So just to show that over the board, um, bishop e6 takes, takes. I'm not sure if there's anything better. King h8 takes, takes here. Oh, queen d5 is also nice because I'm threatening this and um, g7 is a bit weak. Oh, but I'm also threatening to hit the rook and g7. So yeah, this should just be losing for black. Yeah. A oh, rook c8, not a bad try. But then I just win like so many pawns and it's so hard to stop the knight from coming to g6. So um, that, was, that was my game. Relatively quick win. I think the game overall, it was like about 90 minutes in, in length. So got some time to take some walk. Can you show the final position again? Yeah, I can show the final position. Final position was... Whoa, it's bits from Henry Lord Watan. Thanks for the bits. Um, so after rook takes h6, uh, the final position was this, queen g4. And black black is either getting mated right away or getting mated eventually after queen g5 just takes. So, so yeah, um, again, for the YouTube audience, thanks for watching. Smash the subscribe button and click the bell, right? There's a bell like to get notifications, I think. And I'll see you guys in the future.